In this Blender tutorial, we'll use geometry nodes to create this binary matrix text animation. Make sure you watch to the end for a productive bonus tip as well. Let's get started. All right, so let's select the default cube, jump into the geometry nodes tab up here, add new geometry node, press X to delete the group input, shift A, and we'll add a curve circle. And you can alt shift, left click that to connect it. Now we've got our circle in the middle here. Let's increase the radius just a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what we'll want, but we can tweak it later. And let's convert this to a mesh, shift A and type in curve to mesh. And we'll shift D the curve circle. We'll use that as the profile curve and we'll shrink that radius down quite a bit like so. And then what we want to do is we want to convert this mesh into a volume, so mesh to volume. We're going to distribute some points around this circle and we'll shift A and add distribute points in volume. And that'll give us our points like so. Let's uh, crank the density up here. 50 looks like it's good just to start. And I guess like if we ever change the radius of the overall circle, we can always add more density too, because it gets a little more spread out. And on these points, I actually want to, I want to add a one or a zero for that binary look. And to do that, to have like a random string, we're going to use the for each element. So we'll have to connect this points here to the geometry, the element here, and we'll use the modified geometry output there. And within this, we'll do an instance on points. So everything disappears up top, but let's set up our string. So the first thing we want is a string to curve node here. And let's give this a bit more space. And that will be the instance that we instantiate on the point. Uh, what's the string going to be? Well, we can do zero or one, and you can see how it looks there. But we don't want to hard code this. We want it to be random. So let's bring in a switch node. And we want to switch a string so that if the value is false, it'll be a zero. And if the value is true, it'll be a one. So that's the string that we'll output into the string curves input. And for the switch input, we'll do a random value, which we'll set to be, oh, it's defaults Boolean. We'll leave it at 50-50. But we've got an incompatible output, a field output to a single input. But we can fix that with this for each element. We can take the index and plug that in, I think, to the ID, and that fixes it. So now if we look at the top here, we're kind of getting these ones and zeros in place, but let's um, bring in a fill curve. And I want to extrude the mesh just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit, like so. And maybe what I will do as well is transform this on the Y 90 degrees, just so we can see it better. So now these numbers are too big. So let's shrink these characters down a bit like that. Now we've got our one and our zero. So let's take the camera. I don't even know where it is up here, but let's Alt G, Alt R, and then RX 90 degrees. And we will Let's pull that back, pressing G and Y, bring that into the middle here, and R, Z, just to look towards those numbers. And maybe let's change this to a 3D viewport and go to view camera, so we can see what we're looking at. So yeah, the numbers are still too big. Let's pin that geometry nodes tab. The numbers are still too big, so let's reduce that a bit more. So what we want to do is we want to spin this ring around using a transform geometry. And if we bring in like a combine, combine X, Y, Z and plug that into rotation. And if I play with this rotation here, you can start to see a preview of what that binary looks like. If you want it flowing forward or if you want it flowing backwards. Uh, well, let's try that with a scene time using the frame and we'll divide that number by how many frames we have. If we right click and copy as new driver, and right click and paste that as paste driver. Now this gives us the percentage. 
of the animation. And we want to take that percentage and times that by 2 pi or tau. So let's shift D, bring this in, change this to a multiply, type in tau, and that gives us um, the value in radians for 360 degrees. And then we can plug that into this Z here. So now if we hit play, now we've got these numbers spinning around. Um, you do still see the back end, and that's because they're not facing the camera. Now I tried to do some, uh, I, used, I tried to use geometry nodes to do a billboarding effect so that no matter where these numbers were they'd always face the camera but i could not actually figure it out so if someone knows how to do that post that in the comments uh, that'd be super helpful there's some basic information it looked basic to do but for some reason i was missing something critical uh, so what we can do instead is we can on these points here we can transform these numbers we can spin them around using um let's take these the scene time and this is our percentage right so shift p i'm just going to f2 this and rename it as animation factor i guess so that's zero to one so we're spinning 360 degrees we can multiply um negative 360 degrees so negative tau and shifty this combine and plug that into the Z there and put that into the rotation of the points. Okay, so that did not work out the way I expected. And that's because we've got this rotation in the instance on points. So let's set that back to zero and let's actually change that. I think we can do it here. We can stand the numbers up here, spin them around. Yeah, so they're all staying kind of the same angle. So let's try uh, giving this a bit of an offset. If we shift A, sorry, shift D, change this to add. And let's spin that around so that faces the camera a bit like so. It looks like they stay pretty constant. Okay, so let's look at the string to curves. I'm going to change my font. You can go ahead and click the open font button and pick any font in your system. And I like this. Uh, I like the look of this font for binary numbers. And so maybe let's try increasing the density a little bit as well. Let's double that to 100. You can always change the radius of the outer curve. That'll change the density. Uh, the frame rate can drop quite a bit. So maybe let's just put it to 0.5. You can see the frame rate dropping down to 15. We're targeting, I think, 24 default right now. Yeah, so I want to change that to 30, actually. So now we're really dropping the frame rate, but... Okay, cool. So now let's start to get into some materials, just a basic material. If we go to this material tab down here and click on emission, we'll need to add in shift A to add in a material set material node, change that to material. And the color we'll pick kind of like a cyan, minty. Give that uh, maybe a hundred to start. And let's go into render view here. Let's change this viewport into the compositor and click use nodes. Zoom in a little bit here, shift A to add a glare node. And we'll set this to like fog glow, high quality, um, the other thing we have to do here is set this compositor to always so that we can see how strong that glow is. We can adjust the strength down. And the world is set to have this gray background. Um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to disconnect that. We can try doing a volume, uh, principled volume and just give it something low like 0.05. I don't know if I like the green. It is kind of too matrixy. So what if it looks like more blue? Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of want the camera a little bit offset. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's a little more interesting instead of being straight on. So that's looking pretty nice. What I want to achieve is a bit of um, a bit of separation from the foreground and background. 
I don't know if we can do that with the world. If we go into, I don't know if color's gonna make a difference. The fog, dial that down. The density of the fog should be like, if it's higher, yeah, you're starting to get some separation, but we might have to, um, we might have to increase the size of the radius to get a really good effect like that. So let's go back over here, try changing the radius to three. Yeah, there's some separation there, which means the camera I'm gonna move over here down to Y. So now you've got like dimmer numbers in the back, brighter in the front. It takes away a lot of the fog. So we can go back to the compositor and maybe bump the strength. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I think that's not too bad. I kind of want a bit more punch in the color. So if we go to the render tab, go to color management, let's try like punchy look ish. It's kind of, I want the whites to glow a bit stronger, but the fog, the world fog is preventing that. So I don't know if there's something we could do in the, I don't know if we can do something in the curves here. That's pretty good actually. Yeah, that's really bright, nice whites and then darker in the background. So I'm pretty happy with that. The frame rate's terrible on the preview. Solid isn't much better, but I think this will render out pretty nice. So let's get ready to render. We can go to the render, render tab, turn ray trace on. I'm gonna render with Eevee. Go to output, frame start one and 250. I'm gonna actually, yep. I always like to verify that it's a perfect loop. If you haven't seen that from my other videos, uh, you can press, no matter what frame you're on down here, you can press shift left arrow to go to the very first frame and then shift right arrow to go to the end frame and then press the right arrow to go one frame over. So now you're one frame beyond the end frame. And if you press shift left and it jumps to frame one, there should be no difference. So you can do that really quick. Start. N plus one, start, no difference. So it's a perfect loop, which is what we want. So we are good to go. Let's change this to file format, FFmpeg, color management and coding. Let's do MPEG-4. H.264, perceptually lossless, and go up to render, render animation. All right, here's a bonus tip for you. The frame rate is really bad. It's dropping down to 10 FPS instead of our target of 30. But what we can do instead is we'll pause that. We can shift A and bring in a bake node. And then if we bake the animation, not the still, but bake the animation. So now that we've got our frames baked from frame one to 250, you can see that we're much closer to our 30 FPS target. And that allows us to get a much better sense of the speed of this animation, which for me, this is way too fast. Um, so I'm going to slow this down and render again. So if your FPS is struggling and you need a better sense of the animation, you can always try baking it. One of the gotchas though is any changes that happen before the bake, like on the left side of the bake, if you were to tweak the, um, well here, let's pause it. If I was to go in here and tweak the density, like we can crank this to a thousand, nothing changes in the viewport because it's already baked in. So that's that's something to be aware of. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and gained some more knowledge to apply to your own projects. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to stay in the loop. See what I did there? Also, keep leveling up. You'll enjoy this next video, so give it a click and I'll see you there.